Good morning and welcome. Uh, glad to have everybody here today. And for those of you who are joining us on the internet here at uh, Woods United Methodist Church as we share this time with you, whether you're seeing us live on Facebook or you'll be catching us later on YouTube, we hope that this is a blessing time for you as we spend this time together. A few announcements we want to take care of and get out of the way. Um, Jeannie, I'm told that you're coming up and giving the uh, Farmer's Market Report. Yes, I can't wait to hear this one. <laughs> I like Sue, I don't need the stool. Um, we, uh, <laughs> we uh, had a great day yesterday. Um, the wind and the rain tried to keep us away, but we got out here, stopped shortly after we were here, picked up later on, but it was a really, really good morning. Uh, we had seven tables. Open, nine vendors, 24 customers total, 19 community customers, and five vendor customers. And it was a really good day of fellowship. You know, the Kids of Crisis, I had a table a couple of years ago. And I was sitting yesterday, all their money, all of the stuff they take in, goes up to their mission fund. And so far this summer, the Kids for Christ have $175 that will go to admissions. So, you know, it's, praise God, it's all of his blessings. We Now we're seeing a lot of return customers every week, so that's really, really exciting. They ask about the church and we tell about them and hopefully seeds are being planted and we'll see some folks with us. So please keep everyone in your prayers. Uh, pray for the market that continues to do well. It's not just for the selling of the vegetables and the jams and the jars. It's for fellowship and it is for evangelism. So thank you very much for your support. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm gonna have a stool out here next week and I'm gonna tell Sue. It's exactly because you said that's what she needed. <laughs> <clears throat> um, our uh, flowers today are given to the glory of God and in loving memory of Bob and Ruth Chester, whose wedding anniversary was August 7th. It's given by their family. So um, uh, in memory of them, our blessing upon um, their memory. I uh, want to remind people that there is a uh, finance committee meeting tomorrow at 7 o'clock and an administrative board meeting tomorrow at 7.30. I want to stress that those are tomorrow, not today, because when I pulled up to the church, I swear to you, I thought today was Monday and not Sunday, <laughs> which means there's no telling where today is going. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so, um, but on, on those announcements and, and keep an eye, uh, keep an eye on your monthly calendar as it comes out for things that are uh, upcoming for us. and. On those notes, let us set our hearts and our minds in an attitude of prayer and praise. Oh, am I missing one? I'm missing one. Uh, on the door is the current September calendar to be. Okay. If you have any dates, please put on there because I'll have to turn it out a little bit early this month. Gotcha, gotcha. And so. I don't know about food bank for this coming month. Don't have enough, we'll turn it over to September. Sure. So right now, um, it's coming in. Okay. But we'll go, you know, day by day. Okay. So make sure you check outside the calendar for September. Put if you have things on there, put those down so that can be ready to go on the calendar that goes out to everybody. It's, and it's um, in we're um, collect, as we do each month, collecting items for a food bank. So please um, make sure you get those items in here so we can. Have our collection and, and do so. Uh, just recently, Eugene and I met with uh, two of the officers from Chesapeake County Police Department to address security concerns at the church and things of that nature. And one of the things they brought up was uh, the fact that in most churches, nobody is outside. We're all in here in here now. I went through the parking lot and there are eleven cars unlocked. And if I wanted to come in and go through the cars in the parking lot, 
No one would have served him. That was one of the things that they brought out. So I just decided on the spur of the moment, I would go ahead and check the car in the parking lot. And after they had a 2311 on the left on lock, which means somebody could individually go through and take whatever they wanted. So that's just the word we picked up, and we'll be lawful to bring them report right. back to the administrative board to the trustees over the past. Right, we, we had um, walked through with, not that we've had any problems, but just a walk through with the police for some uh, suggestions and ideas, and um, we be putting those together and giving those to the administrative board so we can get them out to everybody. Um, so keep an eye out and, as we present those items to you. All right, let's take this time now to set our hearts and our minds in an attitude of prayer as we come before God this morning. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for today. We thank you for the spirit of grace that brings us together. We thank you for your guidance that comes upon us. Let your spirit be among us now, that it will hold us together, that it will lift us up, that we may know your love upon our hearts. Let what we do today, let our worship be an offering to you. May you return it as a blessing to us. In your name we pray, O Lord. Amen. We're going to start with our opening hymn number 170, 170. Oh, how I love Jesus. Please rise as you're able. Let us join together to sing. from the book of Ephesians, the fourth chapter, beginning with the 25th verse. If you're looking for that in your pew Bible, it's on page 1,148. Okay. So I give you a minute to look that up. 1,148. We'll be doing Ephesians, beginning, uh, well, Ephesians, I get it. Ephesians, chapter 4, beginning with verse 25, we hear these words. So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing, 
Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit, with which you are marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, we have a bit of a treat. We have some special music coming. Please enjoy. Hang on, just a minute.
you go off to school? Uh, about a week and a half. A week and a half. So, um, I know, right? You have to know her and now she's in trouble. So, uh, so uh, it, please remember to um, thank her for today for sharing this music with us and um, also to wish her well as she prepares to go off to school and um, to continue her learning and growth as she is there. So, um, thank you again, Grace. We appreciate this. All right. Let us join together in prayer. Dear God, as we have read your word today, 
Let your spirit be among us. That the word we share, the word we hear, would be your word for us. In your name we pray, O Lord. Amen. There's an old joke that a um, uh, United Methodist preacher preaches with the Bible in one hand and the Book of Discipline in the other. So you make sure you get it right. And I, I love this portion here where it talks about putting away falsehood and malice and slander because if you look in the Book of Discipline and it talks about Wesley's three simple rules, and the first one is do no harm. One of the things it says is, don't talk bad about the preacher. I love that line. I mean, there are other good things in there, too. I think. Um, Paul is writing to the church in Ephesus. He has been talking to them about growing in Christ, about what their life was like when they did not know Christ, and they were living... a living one way they were living as they understood the world's rules to be and he has been working with them to live in Christ and how Christ wants the world to be how Christ brings about changes to the world how Christ looks at people and things and then he gives us in here these challenges which it would seem are simple right it would seem like they're easy put away falsehood let us all speak the truth truth to our neighbors for we are members of one another when I got here to this church someone said to me in one way or another everyone in this church is related to somebody else right am I making a mistake in my state one way or another everybody is connected to the other May not have the same last name, don't have, well, don't always have the same first name, but we do all have the same label, Christians. The name that should be first about who we are. And so as we are one with another, we need to treat each other honestly and openly, putting away all falsehood, let us speak the truth to our neighbors. It's, it's, not a, it's not an either or kind of thing. It's a both and. Put away this and then use this. Put away the falsehoods. Speak truth. Now you got to be careful about speaking the truth, right? Guys know this. Does this dress make me look good? Yes, ma'am, it does. <laughs> Gotta be a little more. Honest. <clears throat> be angry, but do not sin. We are emotional people, right? Not a person in here that doesn't experience emotions in one way or another. And he says, Be angry. Do you know the interesting thing about anger? Anger is what you call a secondary emotion. Anger is driven by something else. Anger can be driven by pain. It can be driven by falsehoods. It can be driven by a lot of things, but no one feels anger, just anger. There's something else in there that you're going to have. And, she, and Paul says, look, be angry. That's okay. Feel your emotions, feel them. But in the process of that, don't sin. Don't act out in, on your anger in some way that is going to hurt someone else, make them angry at you, that is going to cause a problem between the two of you as a body of Christ. That would be something that Jesus would not teach you to do. Be angry, but do not sin. You can be bothered by something somebody does. You could have been hurt by that, and then you go and talk with them about it. You know, when you said this, it really hurt my feelings. 
It made me angry. I would like to talk to you about that. Not, I'm going to let you know exactly what I think. But, can we take a moment together and talk about this? Be angry, but do not sin, and do not let the sun go down on your anger. Do not make room for the devil. You hold on to that anger, it will torture you. I know, been there, done that. If you hold on to that anger, it will twist you inside. And it makes room for all kinds of problems to come up from that. So Paul says, don't do that. Don't let that happen to you. Let it go. Find a way. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands so as to have something to share with the needy. Interesting thought. Not don't steal, but earn your own way. But don't take from others for yourself, but work for others to give to those in need. It's not just a simple talk about those who are stealing. It's saying, it's saying truly that everyone has that need. If a thief needs, thief needs to reform to become someone who can share with others, what do we need to do? We need to be the kind of people that can work as well so that we can share with others who are in need. It's almost like Paul saying, if we don't do that, we're thieves too. Because there are those around us who Paul says, and Paul has said continually, and Jesus talked about continually, there are those who are in need and we need to take care of them. We need to help them. And I feel like Paul just called me a thief. And that makes me angry. That means I need to address that. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for, useful for building up. How many times have you had somebody that just really, 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 really upset you? And you said, I'm going to get back at them. I'm going to find a way to hurt them like they've hurt me. We may not exactly say it like that, but, but we're going to continue that trading of pain back and forth. We're going to continue that process of tearing them down. They think they're so much better than me. Wait till I tell everybody what I know about them. <clears throat> there was a pastor in the Virginia Conference loved by a lot of people. And he did wonderful things. Wonderful pastor, uh, took, helped out in other ways. Great person. But I knew that he was from the same church I was. And I knew that when he was a teenager, they had to lock them in the classroom with the teacher because if they didn't, they would sneak out and go to the 7-Eleven across the street. And I used to sit there sometimes and fantasize in those difficult moments, what would it be like if I told people, you know, you think you're so good, they used to have to nail the door shut keep in Sunday school class. See, I didn't say his name. That wouldn't have helped anything. 
that wouldn't have built up the body of Christ, that wouldn't have lifted up what he did, it have just torn me down instead. It have just caused me pain instead. But I, I didn't understand that. Didn't understand that at first. I didn't tell that story to others. Me and another person that did that, we that knew it, we used to kind of share that around. But, but if I had done that, the reality is it would have caused me pain. And it was at the moments when I was feeling low about myself, when I was feeling frustrated about myself, when I was feeling hurt that I wanted to say, well, I'm going to tear somebody else down too so I don't feel so bad. That is the way it's going to work. When Jesus came along to people and he saw them in need, he didn't, he didn't get torn down to be where they were. He reached down and lifted them up and helped them up. That's what it means to be loving in Christ. That's what it means to be reaching out and helping the needy, to lift one another up. Paul says... The talk that comes out of our mouths should only be useful for what is building up as there is need. So your words may give grace to those who hear. How do the words that we share help one another? Paul wants us to remember that this is so important as he's telling this church, as he's telling the church in Ephesus, as he's telling all the churches as they go through the struggle of trying to fit people in, of trying to bring in new people and new members, as they try to get Jews and Gentiles together and figure out what makes that work, he says the language you use needs to be building that up. We don't have time to tear each other down. We've got to lift each other up, put each other together. We've got to make this work. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were marked with the seal for the day of redemption. We have been given the chance to be ready to receive into God's kingdom. We have been given the chance to be ready to receive God's blessing. So don't upset him in the process. Don't get him angry about you coming. You don't want to go from, woohoo, we're excited to have him coming, to go, oh man, he's coming anyway. You had, come on, you've had that in your family, right? You have that, you found out that everybody's coming, and that one person you didn't want to have, they're like, didn't come, weren't coming, and then all of a sudden you find out at the last minute, oh man, they're coming. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit with which you were marked for the seal of the day of redemption. Put away from you, oh man, here comes the difficult list. Put away from you all bitterness, wrath, anger, wrangling, and slander. Some of my favorite things. Together with all malice. And be kind to one another. It's bad enough I had to put away the other list. I could have just ignored them. That would have been great. I could have, I could have not had malice to them if I had just been able to ignore them. Then I have to worry about it. But now, not only do I have to not do those things, but I've got to be kind, tenderhearted, forgiving one another. Man, this list gets worse and worse and worse as we go along. Who wants to be called tenderhearted? When I was in school, tenderhearted was not the thing you wanted to be called, especially if you were a guy. Paul says, be easy with one another. Care for each other. Put away all the things that are going to divide you up because all they're going to do is tear yourself, all you do with those is tear yourself down. If you hold on to malice and anger and slander, if those become a defining thing of who you are, all it's going to do is rip you apart. 
Instead, be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Man, it just gets worse and worse. Not only do I have to forgive people, but I'm reminded that God forgave me, and now I have to do it because God did it, and he did it in Christ, and I'm supposed to be a Christian, and now I'm stuck. Man, Paul's pretty demanding here. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us, and gave himself up for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. All these things that Paul has listed here, all the things he's talked about, about not holding on to the all those negative things, which God could very well do. God could have been angry at us. God has been hurt by us. God could say all kinds of things about us. But God said, no, I'm going to let go of those, and I'm going to be kind, and I'm going to be forgiving, and I'm going to be caring, and this is the way I'm going to be, and this is how I want you to be too. It's not easy being a Christian. Let me say that again. It's not easy being a Christian. Lord knows we have challenges in doing that. But be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us. We are reminded that we have a great example in how to live. We are reminded that we have one who teaches us and has continues to teach us through the Spirit what it means to be a caring, loving person with other people, to live as one who imitates God. You ever have that person in your life that you call your hero? The person who made a real difference for you? The person who helped you in knowing the way to act? Maybe they were a part of your family. Maybe they were a teacher at school. Maybe they were a Sunday school teacher. Maybe they were a person in church that you looked at and watched and saw. You saw how they acted, how they cared about people, what they said, and you said, boy, I really wish I was like that person. That's a great place to start. To look at and see, I have an example in front of me of what I should do and how I should be. And we continue on in learning that as we move to understanding that Christ has taught us who we should be, how we should act, the kind of person that we want to be. And that that is a reflection of God who teaches us how we should act and who we want to be. The caring, loving, lifting up, forgiving people who act like God. Can we be those kind of people? Can we be the ones who are going to at times, as Paul said, we're going to be angry. You got to be honest with where you're feeling. You got to be true to your emotions, but you're also willing to to understand them and try to deal with them. To work with those who you are angry, figure out what's going on, what makes you angry, why I got upset because they said something about the pie that I made. We had a youth fundraiser. I'm pointing out my youth got right. We had a youth fundraiser. My mother, God bless her soul, could not bake. And we're at the fundraiser, and one of the people, the youth people, picked up and tried this and said, wow, these are amazing brownies. They were. And I said, well, it was supposed to be a two-layer cake, but it came out about that thick. <laughs> My mother had anger that day. But it was driven 
by that sense of hurt underneath because she had done her best. And I had kind of torn that down. That didn't make me any better. It didn't make me feel, I wasn't trying to be mean. I just said it without thinking. You know those times you say something and then you're like, I don't believe I just said that, right? Right, we all done that, right? Okay, you never do that, but you use it as an excuse sometimes. All right, you never did, but I use it as, you know, hey, I didn't mean to say that. My mother and I had to, had to work that out. I was old enough that I didn't get the spanking kind of thing, but, but enough for us to say, hey, I realized what I did and I'm sorry because it embarrassed her, because it hurt her feelings. Paul says we're going to get angry with one another, but work on it. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. Don't give it that kind of time to fester and, and grow because it's going to tear you apart. It's going to make it so you can't build up others. You got to let that go so you can let go of that slander, that malice, all those other things that come up in there so we can build up the body of Christ. That's what we are trying to do. Build up the body of Christ. And we can do that if we are imitators of God, who believes they can imitate God in what God has taught us to do. I hope that at some point we all give it a try. Because truth be told, it's kind of fun. Let us pray. Gracious God, help us to be your people. Help us to grow in your grace, in your service, and in your love. Help us, Lord, to imitate you in all that we do. That together with one another, we may build up the body of Christ. In your name we pray. Amen. I want us to take time now to um, go to God in prayer for those who are sick and for those who are doing well around us. Um, do we have any who want to be lifted up today? You here? My brother in Greenville, South Carolina, Jack Proctor, has stage four cancer and he's had a kidney removed and some lung parts, but now he's spread to his liver. Oh. And his okay. wife has all time. Oh, no. Oh, no. So, Jack Proctor. In bed. And better in oh. dealing with cancer and Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Others want to lift up? Yeah, Alicia. <clears throat> Mom was in the hospital and uh, had a fall and does need our prayers. Alicia Long's in the hospital, had a fall and needs our prayers. Yeah. Dale in the prayer. Dale in the prayer? Yeah. All right, Mary. A nephew of mine, brother had. Jerry Johnson's brother, triple bypass. Yes. Okay, but he's home. Okay, all right. We're glad that he is home and hope that he continues his healing process. Definitely. Oh, uh, Sienna, baby A or twin A, got some good news. She can see shadows that we know of now. The ophthalmologist thinks that maybe it was just a uh, slow developing. Uh, we'll know more as she gets older, so we bring the prayers that she continues to rest. Right, we've been very concerned with baby Sienna about her ability to see, and they can tell that she is seeing shadows, which is more than before. Right. So they're thinking maybe it's just a slow developing process that she'll be getting uh, better and better as she goes along. We hope for that, Betty. Yeah, Good. my husband told me that he was very scared for the test on Friday. Okay. Your husband no prayers for Tess. Um, please keep Karen and all the other residents at Lucy Corps and wherever else we have these situations. Um, someone who comes there regularly as I think a volunteer or someone like a, a therapist or something. 
um, came in and went home and wasn't feeling well, um, went to the doctor and tested positive for COVID. So they had shut down all visitation right. again. Right, yeah. Um, so at, uh, at Lucy Corp, it was coming in regularly, probably a volunteer or something, working with them, tested positive with COVID. So they've had to shut that down to visitors and other people right now. And there are other places like that as well, where we are, we are seeing a change and a rise and a fall in things and um, how much that affects people, especially when you can't get in to see a loved one that you have in there. So um, we, we want to keep all those situations in our hearts and our minds. Bill. Both of Betty Ann and Cheryl. Okay. And one thing was brought up in Sunday school, there was one praise, Nancy Gonzalez showed up at the public yes. park. Yes. Yes. Nancy Gonzalez was yeah. at the farmer's market yesterday. So that's a real plus from there. And keep Baba and the others right in our prayer. Right. I have a dear friend that I bowl with. Um, her name is Chris. I don't know her husband's name. But he's been in the hospital at MCV since Wednesday. Hmm. And he's had five surgeries already. And he's supposed to have the sixth one sometime this week. But he had an aneurysm, and I don't remember where it was, but mm -hmm. he's had all kinds of steps put in, and she's real concerned about him. So keep, I don't know, like I said, I don't know his name, but I right. know her. Her name is Chris. So Chris's husband has been going through a series of surgeries. He's got a sixth one coming up here. Um, yeah, so we want to keep, definitely keep the two of them in our prayers as well. I also want to say that um, God is so good at answering prayers. Granny is now able to go see her husband face to face. And that is such, I mean, she worries about him and goes to see him all the time, but now she can go in and face him face to face. Yeah. And yeah. like Lucy Cole, we take each day at a time. Right. If somebody comes in and has something, they show Granny that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. take each yeah. day at a time. You take, take those places each day at a time, whether yes. you can get in to see him or not. So, definitely. All right. I'll remind you, um, uh, the cards and the pews and little pencils, please write those uh, prayer concerns down and put them as a basket in the back so we can have them to, to keep track of. Um, with all of those shared together, let us take time to go to God in prayer. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for the presence of your spirit that guides us to help us, that loves us. We have lifted up many today, O Lord, who are in need of your grace and your healing touch. We have lifted up so many, O Lord, who are in need of knowing that loved ones are okay. We lift up people, O Lord, who this day have been separated from loved ones by this COVID virus and what it has done. We continue to ask your prayers, O Lord, upon the curing of this virus, of helping those around us of sharing the possibilities of the vaccine and what it can do. We ask you, Lord, to be with us in our celebrations as well. We know how many times you have healed the sick and given sight to the blind. And we are aware of that in our hearts, in our minds, and in our lives. Be with us this day, O Lord, as we prepare to go forward, that we would know that your grace is upon us, that we may go forward being imitators of you. Help us, O Lord, hear the words that you speak to us, that we may share in your power and grace each day. So Lord, as we move forward and seek to find the actions that do your will, we ask you to share with us the words that help us grow. In your name we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Beloved, I
invite you to join with me in our closing hymn, number 191, Jesus Loves Me. Please rise as you are. <laughs> Beloved, as you go forward this day, know that God's grace goes with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, go with that grace. Amen.